Dance Band. Hello to the two fans and welcome. This is Chicago Ted coming to you with Sevo Season 6, match between Leviathan and Wheel Wreck While Whistling. That is a bit of a tw tongue twister, but for those who don't know, that is fan of Soyon's new team, and uh, looks like he's got a couple of new Ten players joining him go. on that one. Some uh, some of Root's old players mixed with uh, a Five couple of new, new faces, so... Looking forward to seeing them perform versus the consistent and ever Reserve dominant time. Leviathan Dota. Of course, the cast, as always, oh. Jenkins, Shibby, and the rest. So we're Radiant's already in the drafting band. phase, ready to go. So let's bring you guys up to speed. And I don't think anyone uh, didn't see this one coming. We've got the Pudge ban out from Wheel Rack. Just a bit of a respect ban. You got to do it all the time versus Leviathan. Nine times out of ten, it's not a hero you're scared of, Dyer's but bam. obviously these guys know how to play it well. They just released a guide on the uh, on the Reddit uh, forums about their new way to run Radiant's Pudge pit. as like a, a pulling support. I don't know. I have yet to watch that, but these guys always finding new ways to work around this hero, and it, it's quite entertaining. But we've got Juggernaut on tonight being banned out by Leviathan. And uh, Faceless Void taking the second ban by Wheel Wreck. So, of course, I'll be solo casting for you guys tonight. My typical co-caster fan of Soyan. Well, he's going to be playing in this game. So we all have to uh, we'll have to go through this one uh, nice and slow, but nice and easy. As um, Wheel Wreck, they're going to go ahead and grab themselves the Vengeful Spirit. That so leaves him a little bit of options like to go on the floor. School. I mean, we can have the Drow go with that and go for an aura damage item or an aura damage strategy. A lot of heroes go well with that. Puck, Invoker, any real mid-range hero goes incredibly well. Leviathan are going to grab themselves the Brewmaster Lion, though. And knowing Leviathan, I would imagine it's going to be their mid-lane Brewmaster. I think uh, it's either Shibby or Shredder. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm slipping up on which one plays the mid, but... They uh, run that incredibly well, though. Brewmaster can be taken in the off lane with a, uh, an aggressive sort of lane there. And the Lion, a de definitely a great hero to go with that. So good stuff so far coming from Leviathan. Beastmaster getting picked up by Radiant's Wheelwreck, though. Band. That is a brand new one. I don't think I've seen that come up as often. However, they definitely have a bit of Dyer's aura strat going with the Vengeful Aura, giving them bonus damage, minus armor on top. And then you've got the uh, what it is, uh, Inner Beast, which gives that attack speed, that nice attack speed bonus, as well as plenty of scouting. You grab a couple of right clickers, which I think real real wreck are going to, to do at this point, and they're going to have a really strong team, very difficult Five to deal seconds. with for the Leviathan lineup, especially knowing that Lion, not exactly a hero that tanks through very well. Reserve Even Brewmaster time. can tank a, uh, a lot of uh, punishment, but if he goes down before his ultimate goes off, then at least in the early to mid game, he has a lot of trouble being useful. Late game, he's more of an aura. Uh, aura drop there. I mean, picking up the Assault Kirash, Shiva's Guard, Drums, Lads, whatever they want to throw on him. Doesn't need to get his ultimate off to be incredibly effective, but he will have to worry about this uh, wheel wreck bursting him down in no time at all. He does still have the Drunken Brawler, so he can go ahead and evade out most of what they've got, but it's not a reliable way to stay alive, and they're going to definitely have to grab someone to give them a little Radiant bit of space, pick. and they're going to go straight for the Doom pickup. There's all the space you need after they ban out the Shadow Fiend, the Dazzle taking a fall, and... Uh, Wraith King and Axe getting banned out by a wheel wreck. Doom on the field, that is uh that is to be expected. We see Doom all the damn time, and he is never, ever really shown to be ineffective. I mean, every single time I play him, even on the losing team, he always seems to find his target, get the Doom damn off, and then that target, go. well, can't do anything in the fight, so Right Five now, seconds. it doesn't look like they've got any real uh, heavy doom targets. I mean, Beastmaster, once he gets his shout Reserve off, he's kind of just sitting there dropping an aura. Same with Vengeful. Uh, you got the uh, stun, the magic Jeez. missile, wave of terror. You're done, but it kind of just wades them from picking up any hero that they wouldn't want to get doomed. Notably, the Slark, the Bristleback, things like along those lines that would just get completely wrecked by this hero. And they're going to go for the Clinks, which... By and large, is a very greedy pickup to grab versus a Doom. But again, you can't you can't just let this Doom pickup stop you from grabbing any sort of carry. And Clinks will be able to position himself with the Skeleton Walk and get away go. from the Doom and start uh, taking the fight. 
not while the doom Five doesn't seconds. know where he is and that'll help out a little bit as well as his damage is going to be incredible with the um, increased attack speed on top of strafe the burning arrows and all that minus armor and increased damage he is going to be hitting like a truck and i wonder how they're going to run this clinks we haven't seen get uh, clinks get picked up in a very long time at least not um not games i've watched and i want to see if they decide to go for the um the UAMs, maybe grab a Desolator or a Lifesteal along the lines of uh, Mask of Madness, which I wouldn't be surprised with the attack speed of Beastmaster Strafe and uh, regular um, just the Mask of Madness attack speed would be great. Or it could go uh, something like a Dom and grab Creeps to always have for the Death Pact. And that's a strat I don't think I've seen tried, but it definitely feels like it could work out incredibly well, especially with the Helm of the Dominator giving the bonus hit points, which translate to more and more damage for the little guy. So that is a very interesting pickup, and I wonder how they're going to run it. Like, typically, we see Klinks get put in the off lane because of the skeleton walk. He'll be able to sit, sap experience, and be good. But I think he, um, before he started to fall a little bit out of the meta, he started getting played as the either the safe lane carry or the uh, mid lane which is definitely a decent place for the guy. Get a lot of experience on him, increase his levels Ten by uh, quicker than the enemy team, and hope his damage is quite Five there. Seconds. But Again, it's really up in the air what Wheelwreck want to do. Both Radiant's these teams pick. are very odd in how they run their heroes. They can do the weirdest strats. Somehow they make them work, but I can never put a pin onto what these guys are doing. Leviathan, they go ahead and grab themselves. The Jakiro could either be running as a Korajak or just uh, another support. Haven't seen the Jakiro get picked up. I think there was a, a competitive uh, pick rate that went up recently that showed he Ten had something, something crazy, like a minus 20 or 30% uh, pick Five ban seconds. rate since the, uh, the recent patch. And although crazy, it makes a little bit of sense. He just, he, he was time. great before. He's great now, but... I think uh, other heroes just they uh, people started playing around with them a little more. Most notably the Juggernaut, which got is getting picked up so much. He will be banned out again. We talked about him being first banned in this game, but I just gotta say how how amazing this guy storms onto the field, and out of pretty much nowhere, um, the the changes to him it makes sense. They gave him that extra crit chance in the early game, which. And uh, combined with the Mask of Madness that gets picked up nowadays on him, means he's critting for a ton. But aside from that, it just it feels like he About was dying. he was strong before the patch, and I guess teams just figured that little bit of change pushed him over the edge. Weir Wreck, though, contemplating on their last, uh, on their fourth pick. Both teams kind of digging into their reserve time a little bit, which could hurt them a little later. The final pick typically being their cheese pick, but if they if their strategy is a little on the edge or if they're, they don't feel like they can grab the one that they planned on, being low on reserve time means you don't quite have a lot of time to think about it. And I guess the fourth pick definitely has a little bit more on the edge because that's your last pick before the final band, so... We'll see. Uh, Wheel Wreck, though, with their uh, one support, they could definitely give away their second support right now. I don't think. Maybe Ten they can give away their um, their third core or just go for uh, five seconds. Go for something completely off the wall right now. But digging in the reserve time, they actually are almost out of reserve time. They go and they that grab the bam. Queen of Pain. That is a new one. That's one we haven't seen in a very long time. Definitely bringing back some heroes from the grave. Beastmaster, Clinks, and Queen of Pain. Though, Quap, uh, been picked up a little bit more recently. I don't think I've seen her in many pro games, but definitely go. seen her in a lot of pubs, scrims, uh, NEL2. Five all seconds. showing a little bit of love towards the hero. And, I mean, again, changes that didn't really seem like a lot. Okay, switching the damage Radiance type of band. the ultimate. Maybe a little bit more than a little bit change, but still it's amazing how these heroes are just kind of popping up like daisies. So more fling and ancient apparition, Dyer's take a fall in the band phase. And now we're under our final picks. Now remember, neither team has a lot of reserve time. So these picks should be coming out fairly quickly. If not, then these guys are subject to randoms, but Leviathan again, having both their supports out right now, both two cores 
this will probably be their safe lane carry. And you see Wheel Wreck, they already banned out the Morphling, but um, some of the more common picks are still in the pool. Of course, Ace's Void Ten and Judge gone, go. but you still have your Spectres, your Anti-Mages, uh, even Medusa is still in the pool, though that could be a little problematic <sighs> with the lineup. They are going to go for it, though. And, uh, you know, pit. I can see the reasoning behind it. They don't really have any of the typical Medusa counters, so to speak, although really nothing can counter Medusa except a lot of hexes, a lot of stuns. And right now, all that Wheel Wreck have are the Magic Missile and the um, the Primal Roar, which by and large aren't the biggest stuns in the game. They only last a little bit of time. Granted, Beastmasters go through BKB. Go. You can never swap out from the Ventral Spirit to cancel channels, but Medusa not really known for any channeling abilities. It, the the lockdown, okay, there we go. Wheel Wreck, they decide to go for a little bit extra lockdown there. They're going to pick themselves up. The Enigma, and that will be our finished draft for the day. Now we go on in to the actual game itself. As we have Leviathan versus wheel wreck wheel wreck while whistling that's still a heavy tongue Better twister get ready. this is sivo week four one day two uh if you're looking for the uh, the not today versus e-hug game by the way i believe i updated that on the sites uh that is postponed i don't know when the new date is it will be announced but uh not today had some scheduling issues with their other tournament that they're playing in today so we're staying active on that one. Also, a quick note on uh, some things going in NA East. We've got a, quite a bit of uh, lag packet loss. We've had a couple of, uh, I guess, DDoS, uh, DDoS attacks recently. So um, we might be pausing a little bit early on as we are right now. But unlike regular games, these don't get uh, nullified by a little bit of lag. So we're just going to wait for the packet loss to get down to a respectable point. And then we go from there. So just a quick introduction to the teams for the wheel wreck while whistling. I think that's the first time I got it correctly on the first try. We've got Derp Derp <laughs> playing the Vengeful Spirit. I believe a direct uh, trade-in from Root Gaming. The recently, um, I won't say disbanded team. They are undergoing roster shuffles right now. But uh, Derp Derp and uh, who is it? Tolera are both playing here for wheel wreck while whistling. I think I'm just going to call them wheel from here on out. But speaking of Talera, he's going to be on the Beast Master. In the mid lane, we've got Fan of Soyon picking up the Enigma. Relic mid lane on the Queen of Pain. We'll see how many no right, talismans he buys on. this game. And Salizel on the safe lane. Clinks looking at the other side of the water. We got Shibby on the Brewmaster. So I guess it was Shibby. New Sham on the Lion. Flying Zebra playing the Flying Jakiro. Shredder on the Medusa. And Jenkins, tweet him please because he's lonely apparently. He's going to be on the Doombringer. So Shredder will be mid lane on the Medusa here. This is a, a pretty standard, if you think about it, way to run the Medusa. Definitely a uh, new wave kind of thinking. I'm still a fan of the safe lane Medusa because it's easier to get some stacks out. Well, you can leave the lane and... Uh, and have it not be as consequential, but this aggressive or this tri lane right here between Jakiro, Lion, and uh, Brewmaster is incredibly scary. Lots of burst, lots of just straight up damage, and right click to follow up coming from these three heroes. It's going to be very difficult. The Wheel Rack, they are running an aggressive um, off. bit of a lane. Are they? Uh, it looks like Talera and yeah, Fanasoran yeah, are making their way. No, Fanasoran is just going to go ahead and deny a, uh, a creep from that. He's going to hang around, though. It looks like maybe he wants to go for the jungle, but he's going to have to wait a little bit before he does that. This solo lane for Talera is going to be very difficult, though. Uh, Sleazel should have a fairly decent time versus a Doombringer. Being able to uh, have Derp Derp as well. They've got plenty of ranged harass for the Doombringer. Jenkins might have a lot of trouble. So I think this is going to be the game of hatred towards the offlaners, but... The uh, lane that we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on here is Relic in the mid. This guy is going to have a lot of kill potential, especially earlier on versus Medusa. Went for the laning build, typically going to ma be maxing out that snake here, and that means it cuts into his ability to get up some, some defensive on the mana shield, which gives Relic free reign. Once he gets Blink, a Scream of Pain, maybe a couple points Denied. of dagger, he's going to be able to burst down Shredder fairly quickly if uh, Shredder's not careful, so... 
Level 6 hits and it gets a little bit easier, but before then, yeah. things are difficult. Looks like bottom lane, they're going to throw out a magic missile onto Jenkins. The damage isn't quite there. A very late wave of terror. I guess that was just fresh from the level up and looking at the experience, it probably is, but... Jenkins going to live, albeit on a very low amount of hit points. That's going to cause him a little bit of trouble. He doesn't have much regen, two tangles, and that's it. And with the Sentry Ward, he's not going to be able to do any sort of dewarding right now. He's just going to make his way, it looks like, back towards the lane, slow and steady. Meanwhile, Talera getting blocked out by Flying Z. We're going to cut through the trees just to get a quick escape out. But he's going to get away on a very similar story. Maybe they throw an Ice Path out on him. They don't even have it. He's still level 1 out on uh, Flying Zebra, so that is not on the arsenal for them. And both offlaners almost taking a fall there, but both are surviving. As a two-minute rune about to spawn, it looks like Talera making his way up has a bit more regen than our uh, than our Doombringer, who has made his way towards the jungle, so he's going for a catch up there. And Talera finding a regen rune is going to help him out immensely in this lane. Now he can make his way all the way back and not have to worry about his um, his bit of a hit from that early engagement there. So. In terms of farming, Sleazel doing decently, but he is being overshadowed by Shibby and Relic here, so. His safe lane farm definitely a little bit slower than typical. He was farming under tower, though, so that could have been Whoa. digging into his last hits a bit there. And things just uh, going about pretty slowly right now. It's been uh, two and a half minutes, and... No real engagement has happened yet. We can see Dirk Dirk is going for the triple pull right now, which is uh, pretty respectable. Uh, this pull, if you uh, do it consistently, can get you to level 6 in a very short amount of time, but it requires a support that can burst down uh, camps fairly easily, and Vengeful Spirit isn't exactly known for being able to do that, so she's going to have to leave this camp relatively healthy and go for it a, th a second time just to get the same effect that someone like Alina would be able to do probably on the uh, on the first round so Dyer's bottom towers getting the business again it looks like things going fairly passively derp derp firming up we mentioned going uh, pretty well he's got his level three sleazel sitting on level four is going to be going for that rush orchid he's sitting on two of sage's masks and can build the double oblivion staff and recipe off quickly after that Queen of Pain's got the Bile, the Null Talisman, 420 gold on top of that. Medusa looks like Shredder is going to be going for the Aquila with the Wraith Band and a uh, Sage's Mask in the, the inventory. Want mine, the Jenkins, tower. very slow here in the jungle, but it is keeping up with Radiant's the Vengeful Spirit. Tower. He's stacking up camps, going to be going ahead and devouring those, but 730 gold means he's a bit off from his hand of Midas. Nusham's got his boots ready to go. It looks like he's making his way towards mid. Talera does not have boots, so Nusham... Should be able to just hang up close, but with the boar coming out, Nushan's going to get slowed up, and Talera will be able to back himself away. Flying Zebra coming in at the tail end of that one. Level 3 with Tangos ready to go, and Shibby going to pop an early, early Orb of Venom, which a very interesting pickup for him. Increases his kill potential, but there isn't really much kill potential in this lane to begin with, and I don't exactly see him picking up a Scotty, though I've seen... Uh, I've seen Leviathan do uh, crazier things, so. In terms of net worth, farming, and all that, it looks like Wheel Wreck are getting a slight tower. lead off this game. And I'll emphasize slight right now, though. Sleazel is going to town this bomb Can't tower. And our first Dyer's action, I guess, right of the game, the tier yes, one, will Dyer's fall before tower. any heroes see the grave. And, well, that's, uh, that's something you don't see every day. So Sleazel and Co. Pits. picking up a good a chunk of gold from that one. It looks like... They missed the tower last hit, so none of them getting a super surplus of gold, but everyone getting a, a decent chunk anyway. You can see the, the golden XP graphs are probably going to reflect off that one. Yeah, net worth starting to go south just a little bit. Leviathan, though, still hanging up with the farming. We've got Shibby keeping ahead of things, although falling behind of a Sleazel. Still in a decent, respectable spot, and... He doesn't seem to be making anything happen right now, but he's going to have a blink out really soon. Radiant Once that comes out, we're probably going to see some fights breaking out like a uh, like a teen's face there as those blinks allow him to find really good initiations, maybe get a kill onto uh, the supports here, Derp Derp and Fanasoyan, who have smoked up and are going around to try to catch Shredder out. He's maintained a very aggressive position right now. He has no idea this is going on. The smoke has not revealed yet. 
and he's gonna get caught on the wrong side of the river with the dagger flying out. Now the magic missile, his mana shield is already oh, down. Don't even blood. need a black hole, don't even have it. As first blood that goes away, up oh, derp derp. And now a kill on the board and a tower. Wheelwreck have taken a sizable lead here in the early game, six minutes in. Now Tolera positioning himself on the top lane. He's got to be very careful. He's getting spotted out by Flying Zebra, who could easily block him in. He doesn't quite react in time and probably would have died if he had done so. So smart positioning by him. The boar will have linger the around, though. And do something about that it looks like tower. Shibby hanging close, has his blink dagger. The uh, courier going to be bringing it out to him. Maybe a little bit of skirmish going on between Derp Derp and Lucian, but nothing erupting from tower. that. And Phantom Soyan has gone back to farming, looking for an early mechanism, has the headdress out and about. Will be able to pick up the buckler now and is only going to be a little bit short of the recipe after that. Chevy here with a blink dagger in the mid lane. Relic is not exactly a target you can bring down quite yet with the blink out. The blink slam from Shibby is not going to be enough to kill Relic. In fact, I don't think even if he throws out his ultimate, which he wouldn't have the mana for both anyway, uh, Relic could easily just blink away and uh, no chain lockdown to him. So they are going to need some backup. It looks like Nushan may be the one to supply it, but Relic is keeping an eye on things. He does have a nice Observe Award right now, which uh, does not spot out, uh, barely spots out Nushan, so he knows exactly what's going on here. Top lane to Larry, gonna see some liquid fire. They throw out the ice blast onto him, but it's just some chip damage. Nothing major as Chevy taking a scream of pain, and that's about it. Relic again just having a really simple lane right now with a <laughs> magic wand out. Going for some uh, extra burst of heal and mana there as he's not really seeing any aggression, so it's not exactly paying itself off, but. Dyer's mid tower could use a little It may start help. seeing uh, some action. When fights start breaking out. Should be making his way back towards mid, but no one really wanting to be aggressive right now. And this is really a problem for Leviathan. Once this Orchid comes out on uh, Sleazel, then Wheel Wreck are going to be able to take fights left, right, and center around the map. I mean, Relic is already very scary right now, and he's only going to get worse and worse from as time goes on. Not only being an incredible uh, burst damage nuker, but... He'll start building some great attack damage. He's already sitting at about 90 hit uh, damage and and counting. So their one bit of retribution here is that we still have a farming uh, farming brewmaster, and he's doing very well again with that blink dead timing sub uh, eight minute blink. And Shredder has made his way up towards the Guess top to try to uh, try to be as effective with the farm, although way behind on the CS Dyer's board. Should be able fortified. to find as much as he needs up here in the top lane. Dyer's mid -tower. Should be having Dyer's to rotate down to the bottom as his tier 2 is taking a huge amount of damage. Sleazel and Derp Derp just going to town here. There's no contesting this bottom lane. Taking hits. And once the Orchid comes out, they can easily just bring down uh, Shredder. And not, or sorry, uh, Shibby, and not have to worry too much about it. So he's got to be really careful. Earth Spike flying out from Nushan just to clean up the wave. They can't even bring down the tier one tower just yet. It looked Dyer's like Derp Derp with level six wanted to go ahead and try to swap someone back, but Talera, not level six yet, will not have the primal roar. And Dyer's mid they'll just go ahead and passively help. defend this bottom lane. Mid lane relic will take a tier one the with the help of Phantasoyon. And bottom lane, Sleazel constantly pressuring in. We'll have his orchid done within the next minute. And I mean this guy is falling completely out of control right now. We'll have to wait and see for the next team fight whether or not his snowball is going to be too difficult to deal with, or if it's just gonna be a non-factor as that's gonna be coming out in about 40 gold, and he's definitely gonna be seeing some action once that does come out. Top lane is ripe for the picking, too. You've got three heroes, which they've got a good tri lane, but silence one of them, and it sort of kind of falls apart from at the seams. But taking a look back at the last hit chart, yeah, the top three last hitters are all on the side of Wheel Wreck, and it doesn't look like Leviathan have much to say about it. Uh, Jenkins Dota with that hand of Midas freshly out. He's going ahead and peeling up some uh, neutral camps. That'll help him out a little bit and bring his farm up uh, a good chunk with the Devour. The hand of Midas, he'll start skyrocketing from this point on. But 
again, he's going up against this team of wheel wrecks, which uh, by and large individually have so much net worth on each individual hero. I don't think there's a single guy that isn't exactly finding their items. I mean, Beastmaster, even though he got shut down a bit in late, has the Ancients to fall back on. Derp Derp's been pulling through and getting triple pulls. Uh, you got Relic, who's been farming like a madman in the mid lane. Clinks again farming like a madman in the bottom lane. And Enigma, who is very short of his mech. I decided to grab a hand of Midas just because he was getting the gold for it. And now he's going to smoke up, maybe try to find another gank. It looks like uh, Shibby might be the target. No, Shibby most certainly is the target here. And with an Orchid with a black hole, they've got plenty to clean him up. And it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Orchid immediately on him, but he jukes it out. And the vision means that they can't completely follow up on that. Now the Orchid's worn off. Do they have a black hole to keep him from going into the primal split? They don't use it. Instead, Fan of Soyan getting caught out. He won't go down just yet. He gets away barely, and it looks like uh, Shibby will have to turn around and secure that kill. Lion, though, Nusham will grab that one, and Sleazel going on into the skeleton walk will get himself away, but Leviathan put themselves on the board. And that is incredibly pivotal, especially considering the fact that that was a very, very difficult situation for the Brewmaster, though, but perfectly played by him, and maybe a little bit slow on the Enigma to clear some trees as... Vision is Clink's worst nightmare right now. Down. And of course, it can be, a lot can be said about the great positioning of Shibby to be able to duck into those trees quickly and efficiently once he knew Dyer's that he was in a little tower. bit of trouble. But top lane, you know the, drill. the tier one tower is gonna drop, which drops a lot of map control. You can see Watch all, all of this script, no breaking through the just gets completely to, uh, seized Dyer's by Wheel Rack. And it looks like with down. the uh, glyph, they're going to hold on to it for a bit. Relic, though, going to get very aggressive. And he goes for it. Gets it. No Dyer's deny from Shredder. Gone. And he'll back himself off with that extra surplus of gold. He does have an invis rune. It looks like he's going for an orchid of his own. Maybe he uh, turns into Flying Zebra here. He doesn't know where the rest of the team is, but maybe he doesn't care. Is he confident in his ability to burst down the Shakiro? Scouts it out. Sees Shredder close by. I don't think he uh, I don't think he sees Nusham either, so. Turns around. Is he gonna go for it? He's waiting. He's waiting and watching. Now he's got his ally. Sleasel is in. Who's their target? I think Medusa's gonna be their target here. They pop in, Orchid out, scream of pain. Do they have a sonic wave? It's off the mark. They miss it, but in comes the primal roar, and Talera will save that one. Meanwhile, Flying Zebra getting chased by Relic. They have the screen of pain, and the TP won't be enough. Relic will grab himself his a double kill there. And it looks like Sleazel isn't done. He pops out another Orchid. A couple bits of damage flying out, but the Orchid damage won't be enough to clear, uh, clean him up. One more attack, and maybe. But there, he will get himself away, and that's a two for none. Unanswered double kill going on to Relic. Doom, meanwhile, picks himself up a Blink Dagger. And the net worth for Doom isn't too bad. He's the highest of his team right now. Medusa, very, very low uh, for a Medusa that wants to be at least second or third to have a chance in the big game. Should be Dota getting off his primal split and will be turning onto uh, Phantasoyan, who pops out his mechanism. They throw him up into the cyclone, bring him back down just in time for Doom, but with the Devourer slowing him down a little bit, now they get out the boulder smash. The Doom flies out, but they have to retreat. Blink out from Doom, they will be able to get to deny off and will deny himself with the Idolins. Now Relic flies in, but maybe a bit over aggressive. Actually, they catch Sleazel right underneath a uh, Sentry Ward and bring him down in no time at all. Relic has backed himself off and will get himself in the trees and out to safety. But that is a, a, a one for a, a one and a half for none there. Dyer's they get the uh, Doom off and they get the kill difficulty. on the Enigma, but he denies himself for it, so it doesn't really mean too much except for some lost gold on Phantasoyan's part. Dyer's mid tower won't but that is a huge, huge death Trouble for Clint. He's slowing him down tower. at all right now. Uh, relatively speaking, is incredibly, incredibly good, so. Flying Zebra gonna cancel out his TP as Brewmaster finds Derp Derp here underneath the Sentry Ward. Kind of uh, kind of an awkward positioning there. And they grab themselves a, a cool 700 gold from that one. Or at least a swing from that one. And the net worth advantage, 7,500 for Wheel Wreck, is starting to see itself uh, erode away a little. Uh, their experience definitely eroding there as 
They're both at about 5,000 right now from the 7,500 that they were not too long ago. And Sleazel and Co. just resorting back to farming it up a little bit. Net worth has been overtaken by Relic, but it's still on the same team, so nothing too bad. He will pick himself up a regeneration rune, and that's going to mean he can farm up, burst all of his spells down to some creeps, and then region himself back up and take a fight. Looks like Roshan might be their target though. They've got the Venge, they've got Klings. They should be able to clean him up very quickly. No ward spotting this out from Leviathan, or at least, uh, sorry, wrong team. Leviathan has all the wards spotting this one out. They know what's going on. But are they gonna be in the reacting time? No, they're not. Roshan falling Roshan very little amount of time. Immortality. Leviathan just can't seem to keep up right now. And we talked about this uh, aura strategy that they've got going on between the Vengeful Spirit and the Beastmaster. They can just buff up their team completely. And the damage is almost unreal right now. They're going to go ahead and group up here in the bottom lane. Tier 2 Tower is their target. The Dire best do something about and that bottom fortification tower. is online, but it doesn't look like they want to spend it just yet. Relic gonna got himself a tower. A he is tower. sitting at 9k net worth mid -tower and is officially hand. very, very rich right now. He's got an Aegis of Immortality, so killing him once is gonna be hard enough. Killing him twice, near impossible. Sleazel making his way in, spots out Jenkins and backs himself off in uh, kind of a two-pronged attack there. The warding on the map from Leviathan, by the way, is almost uh, incredible. I mean, even though they feel behind, they still have wards covering both the rune spots. They have an aggressive ward blocking the uh, hard camp on the side of Wheelwreck. And they've got sentry wards, so they've been actively de-warding the map as well. The only issue is, even with all this map control from the wards, their effective map control is very small Radiant's because sentry wards and observer wards help out but Radiant's with real wreck actively smoking they've got blink heroes Dyer's they've got invis initiation heroes difficulties. it's way too difficult for them one last top they tower will spot Radiant. out clinks on his rotation up top they ping him out and they blink themselves up into Dyer's the trees and go for a mass a teleport way. do they have the stuns they do not so they'll all get themselves away and this ward being absolutely imperative to helping them do that i think they figured they may be able to take a 2v3, but once they saw Sleazel making his way in, they knew that time was up. Talera, though, is going to go ahead and steal their Ancients, but they do have vision of what's going on here. And Shibi makes his way down, misses the blink. The Ice Path, uh, ice path also missing, uh, but they do have a level death to cancel that TP, and they'll bring him down. Jenkins will be the one to pick up that kill, too. So his net worth is starting to climb. He's second on the board, surpassing Sleazel. And now they make their way down. They want to trade a tier one for a tier two because the right now nothing's really working structures. out for them in terms of uh, top towers. You know the drill. In terms of things around the map, I mean they're ahead in kills. They're up two kills. Net worth in gold though is severely in Real Rex's favor. Yeah. Severely beating only about something towers. 500, 5,000 XP in gold, non-respectively there, but. Still, I mean, Wheelwreck have found themselves a pretty sizable lead despite not getting kills. It's just they're farming the map much more effectively. And the kills they have gotten have been going towards heroes that can make use of that net worth boost. So, and, and Rylek being the big one at that one. He's going to grab a Mithril Hammer, by the way. Could be either a Desolator or a BKB. I imagine the latter if he wants to go safer. But Desolator, definitely no stranger to the right click there. And... That'll be an interesting uh, item build for him. We'll have to see what he does. There's going to be a Tranquils finished onto both Nusham and Flying Zebra. So support's doing okay in terms of farm. 20-minute Tranquil's not bad. Yasha completed on Medusa, so that's going to help her farm up the jungle a bit. But in terms of her team fight, nothing really out for her that's going to make too big of a difference. I imagine maybe we start to see something like a Maelstrom fly out to give her some extra mid-game effectiveness, but... Right now, she's going to need a lot before she can start to tank away in team fights and be any real superpower that she wants to be. A smoke gets revealed, by the way. Nusham going to go immediately get uh, working it up, and in comes Sh her Shredder. Goes in for the primal split, Shibby rather. Shredder will go in for the uh, stone gaze, and they'll pick up Phanasoyon because of that one. Flying Zebra also going down to Clinks. Jenkins will chase uh, Derp Derp. 
with the help of Shredder. They go in for the level death, and he is trapped in a hard place. He'll go down here, uses his stick, but the creeps will grab the kill. It's a three for two, four for two now. As Wheel Wreck, they're just dropping like flies. Relic will grab a kill onto Shibby, but now he goes down. Aegis gets popped, but his supporting cast is all gone. Maybe he continues to chase, though, as everyone's running away very low with a Scream of Pain and the Dagger. He's going to have to turn right around again. The Mystic Floor, the Magic, sorry, the Mystic Snake going in, but not enough damage. Relic dropping low, but Radiant's still alive. As above. Leviathan also come in to support. No breaking down the Radiant structures like this. And what an amazing fight for these guys. Radiant's down on gold, down in experience, up. but definitely up on team fight potential. And they take a Radiant's really, really strong fight. And I think that gives them a pretty sizable advantage right now. I mean, the net worth and gold graph's definitely gonna still be slightly in favor of Wheel Wreck after that one, but by a substantially less margin. So after that fight, Medusa will finish up the um, the Manta style there. And with the illusions hitting out, the illusions get the split shot. There's gonna be a lot of damage coming out from Shredder. It also allows him to disjoint some of these spells that Wheel Wreck have going for him. So this is a great pickup for him. Meanwhile, Jenkins is going for, Ag he actually has his Aghanim Scepter and a Blink Dagger and a Boots of Travel. So his farm is looking really, really good right now from what looked to be a nearly shut down Doom in the offlane, making a great effectiveness of the jungle. And this is one of those players, by the way, that if you want to learn how to jungle effectively, go and watch one of his replays. I mean, between Pudge, Doom, pretty much anything you can think of, uh, Leviathan have down. And they're going to go out, throw the Doom out into Sleazel, and that does a sizable amount of damage, but not enough to kill him, maybe. Maybe it will be enough. He's already down to half HP and dropping very, very low. They have the mechs for some extra regen, and that will keep him alive. But that is a very, very hard-hitting spell. He picks himself up a BKB, and that'll help him out just a little bit. Shredder, in the meantime, sitting on about 1,000 gold. Jenkins with Doom down for another 70 seconds. Maybe they go on to him. Was that an... Uh, I out of it was. Yeah. Fantasoyan will grab himself... The Stick of Alley. And Fantasoyan, in the meantime, will go around behind. They actually spot Shredder in a very bad spot. They orchided him, but he immediately Manta's now a second orchid, and they bring him down. They've got nothing to deal with that, and he found himself with his pants down in the wrong part of the jungle. Now, with Shredder down, he's down for 45 seconds, no buyback. They turn themselves up onto the high ground, and there's nothing Leviathan can really do just yet. They, may, they need to defend, though. They're going to go ahead and swap out Jenkins. Now they turn on to him. They blow him up. In comes Shibby. Out for the primal split, but an aura, a black hole goes down to all three of the Brulings. They've got nothing to do to it just yet. BKB out from Relic. Now they'll go ahead, throw Clinks up, Sleazel into the Cyclone, but the Brulings are all going to die, and they do. Four down for Leviathan. One Rax, and this could actually be game. 24 minutes in, they've got no way to deal with this. The, um, the uh, Jakiro goes down as well, and they don't end up going for the throne just yet. They're going to turn Dyer on to the bottom lane. Tough as nails for now. Dyer's bottom tower's getting the business. And this tower, this rack, should end up dropping. In fact, uh, Shredder Dyer's needs to be very careful. Do they have another swap place. way to go? They do. No mana for it. Bomb farewell to the Dyer's but it won't be too bombs. long now. They pop out the Orchid Omanza style out of the first one. The second one does come through. Stone Gaze maybe doesn't even need it. Oh, doesn't even get it. Orchid damage not quite enough. Shredder will get himself away. New Sham goes in, finds himself a kill on the Phantasoyon. But a Pyrrhic victory there. Oh no, the TP gets can't doesn't get canceled actually. Flying Zebra trying to find out the ice path, but goes in between the two heroes that he wants to hit. Now Talaire trying to get away. We have a level death. They do have an ice path this time, and they'll bring him down. But they're sitting sub two racks. And that was an absolute disaster for Leviathan. As I'm not even quite sure Medusa can carry this game. Shredder, I mean, a great hero, but when all you're sitting on is a Manta style and you're down two lanes of Rax, you better hope you've got a Divine Rapier in the, uh, in the stash or you're not going to be able to do anything. So he's going to sit relatively poor for Medusa. Actually down, he's in the bottom five. 
and net worth. And the grabs definitely skyrocketing after that one. It looked like, oh man, Leviathan, we're starting to take a, a better and better game, but it immediately just caps itself off. And if Leviathan lose here, by the way, they have a perfect 5-0 and record. Losing here is the end of that. In comes Jenkins, in comes Nusham. They want to kill Sleazel. They've got the Doom ready, though. They're not going to pop. They don't even have it. Not yet. So misspoke there, but they will bring him down. He BKBs the teleport, but a little bit late. They have plenty of damage to bring him down even in the BKB. So buying some time right now. Medusa wasn't part of that kill, though, so no extra gold. And he didn't buy a hand of Midas either, so that this is going to be a very slow farming Medusa right now. And it just comes down to how these, these past fights, if they had kept taken great fights, they would have been in a great spot. But I think it came down to, well, it definitely came down to uh, Shredder getting caught out right here in the jungle. They brought him down once, and then it seemed to be Leviathan kind of going in one by one at that point. The black hole on the Brulings here was incredible. But even that was just one of the later dominoes in the stack. Leviathan have quite the uphill battle going up against them right now. There's another quick look at that gold next speed. They actually brought back the advantages since uh, that last devastating fight. But the only issue is now they're going up against uh, three tier twos and a full set of racks up for a wheel wreck uh, while wrestling. So, I mean, this game is just way too hard for them. I guess in Medusa we trust 2,200 gold on top of the Gorgon, but effective net worth for this guy. I mean, Medusa, you rely on having so many more items and having only one Manta style to dispel one of the two Orcas that they've got. And that, I mean, that also doesn't, that forces you not to use it to dispel something like a, uh, like a magic missile or something along those lines. So it really is just, it's a good item. But the amount of effectiveness that they can get out of it is severely gimped by the by what Wielrek have itemized to uh, go against it. So speaking of, well, a relic has his Shiva's guard done on top of the orchid, sitting constantly on top of the net worth chart, and it's just looking really, really difficult for this lineup right now. Relic will reconnect to the game, which means we can start going very soon. And where are we at in terms of ping? I'm fine, but I don't know, let's take a look. Yeah, it looks like Relic might be in a little bit of uh, ping hell right now. But we're ready to go whenever they're ready to go. And yeah, it looks like we're going on now. So game coming back. And then uh, what we missed here was Shippy trying to take out Roshan. But they spotted out with the Eidolons. And now they've got the, uh, the bird too. So Wheelwreck are going to make a beeline for this Roshan pit. This is a very easy fight for them. It's a three against four. In comes Sleazel. In goes Talera. But they go out with the Earth Spike. Now a BKB. Primal Split goes out. The Earth Spear, uh, sorry, the uh, Black Hole can fly through, but they're not able to pick up any Brulings in the meantime. Now the Brulings will have to run away. Flying Zebra will go down to the Orchid. Yes, he goes down. Brulings dropping very low. One more attack, and they do bring down almost all of them. Though Brewmaster will get himself away in the back lines here, and... I believe that was his storm ruling, getting himself back quickly and efficiently. Flare goes down. Two, uh, two uh, Jenkins here. Now a Doom flies out on the Relic. One of the best targets they can get right now. Black Hole still down. Derp, derp, what does he got? Doesn't even matter. Jenkins will clean Relic up, and that is a huge kill. Double kill for the Doom. Derp, derp will go down. 
Gorgon, um, Medusa will drop though. Sleazel turning around, cleaning up Jenkins. Shibby are gonna last a not too long of a time versus this Clanks here. They want to try to turn on to uh, Fan of Soyon, but Shibby just not able to quite do the damage. Now their um, Orchid comes out, and Sleazel goes to town. Look at that damage coming out from the little sack of bones here. As three down. Four down, four for three. Medusa having to buy back and Jenkins. And they make their way down to the Roche pit, but it's not going to be in time. That Roche will go down. That Aegis will go to Sleazel. Quick and clean. What? That, that almost went well. Maybe they go on to Sleazel now. They don't have a Doom, but they do have a Dust. It won't be enough, though. Sleazel will back himself away. Aegis Immortality goes away of uh, Wheelwreck. And Leviathan having to spend a ton of, uh, of buybacks here. Tower could use a little hell. And Shredder going to be very gimped by that. Sitting at 2,200 gold. He hasn't gotten a single bit of gold since the last time we looked at him just because of that buyback. It hurt him so much. And his net worth is still in the bottom five of all heroes. Buyback status two. Three heroes have it. But at this point, it doesn't even matter. The only buybacks that matter are Leviathan's buybacks, and they have none. Meanwhile, Wheelwreck have three, and the only two that they don't have are sub-1,000 gold off from them. So wheel wreck, they can go ahead, they can just farm themselves up right now. They're in no hurry. Being two racks up, having two buybacks down for Leviathan. And they make their way up towards the top lane. Underpaid. It looks like uh, Jenkins will clean up Relic, which I guess I'm a little calm for how what that actually implies. Being Queen of Pain not being able to be in the next fight. Does have buyback, but I don't think she wants to spend it. And 30 minutes in, feels like a 40, 50 minute game looking at the map and looking at where uh, Leviathan have to come back from. There's a stone gaze flying out, but Shredder immediately gonna have to TP. And Fan of Soyon, even though he could have come in, he didn't have a Malefist, didn't have a Black Hole. Tolera, though, did have a Primal Roar. But with a stone gaze, he wasn't able to get it off. And that is huge for the Medusa. Shredder definitely happy about that one. He has to pick himself up another Ultimate Orb, though. Only a little bit of survivability and a little bit of damage. He still is heading for a uh, small amount. And the grand scheme of things is not going to mean much if he gets black hole. Leviathan grouping up in the top lane, but they, they just got to continue to split farm around the map and make sure that none of the lanes push in. So far, nothing really happening right now. 31 minutes, the score is 18 to 17. And things calming down pretty substantially. And we could take a quick breeze over some of the items right now. And Wheel Wreck, obviously very, very scary. But Leviathan, they do have plenty of blinks. And um, Medusa is getting the core items up, just not quickly enough. So if there's any hero that can take a fight while uh, slightly under item, it is Medusa, the Stone Gaze, a very nice spell. Now we're going to have Jenkins again going in for Relic. But this time there is going to be a mech coming out. And he immediately BKBs himself to be able to survive just in case there was Sleazel coming in. And Sleazel, speaking of, has to deny Relic here in the Dire Jungle. That's another fight with Relic gone. MKB finished onto Sleazel is going to mean that he won't get evaded by the Brewmaster. And now they start to make their push, feeling confident in the 4v5. They go up north into the wave, and they're still playing it very safely, very carefully. Waiting for the right opportunity. Fan of Soyan is leading the charge here, at least... Uh, only up to the high ground. Keeping some vision up. Wants to be able to find that black hole if he can get it. Doom back off in 40 seconds, which is not exactly the timing they wanted. In comes the Hex out on Sleazel. This is the Aragus carrier. Bringing him down, though, would be very beneficial, but they can't even get him once. He gets himself away, and they back themselves off, and they reset for the next fight. 
And this uh, Sleazel's just been playing really, really well this game so far. Just being able to find his fights the way he wants them. I don't think I've seen him get shut down in a single fight. In fact, he's only died three times in this game. Meanwhile, Relic finding a double damage rune. This is going to mean a lot here. Do they kill out Sleazel, though? They're going to go ahead and swap him out. Derp Derp being on top of the play there. Dyer's mid towers have and technical now difficulties. Relic baiting out the blink here. Doom is off cooldown. And it looks like he wants to make a go for it. Positioning himself, though. Relic is being very, very careful. But at this point, I think even Sleazel's a difficult Doom right now because he just comes right back with the Aegis. Doom needs a refresher, but he's not going to be able to get it. A blink back coming out from the new champ. They're going to throw out an Acropire. Doom goes out on the Sleazel, but oh man, Jenkins just gets clean. Now they've got the Stone Gates coming out, but it's a second too late. Stoneform pops on the Fan of Soyon, but it's not really going to matter as these uh, dual Necronomicon creeps are burning the Manor of Shredder. They pop him back with the um, with the Nether Swap, and that's going to be the end of that. Sleazel will go in, or they'll go on Sleazel, but the Brulings are not quite enough to bring down anyone. Now a Black Hole, and Shredder, they all go down. That's a GG well played, and Leviathan take their first loss of the season and that's two wheel wreck an amazing game being played by fan of soyan and crew and in the end leviathan just could not deal with it so guys this is chicago ted coming to you with steve o season six we wreck taking their win over leviathan and we have uh, one more game i think for the night and that coming up, I believe, is Dust versus uh, versus Black Sheep. So stick around for that one, guys. In the meantime, we're going to take a short break. More SIVA will be coming up soon.